Hi everyone, welcome back again to another video. Today we are going to have a look at MX Linux 19.3 which was released a few days ago. And we're going to install it and have a look at what's new in there and why is it actually always on top of the charts on DistroWatch. So let's get going. So here we go guys, uh, let's have a look at MX Linux 19.3. So it was released a few days ago and uh, let me pull up here the release notes. And let me go full screen in here. So as you can see here, it says in the release notes that I will leave anyway in the video description below. As usual, this release includes the latest updates from Debian 10.6 and MX repos. And we have here some new packages like XFC 414 or KD Plasma 515 and so on. We have also some new things here. We have the new and updated MX apps since 19.2. The updates are the MX installer, which is actually the Gazelle installer. It has some fixes in it. And we have also some other fixes in other MX apps. So you can download the ISO for MX Linux if you go on the website here and go to the home tab and you can click on download here then from here you can choose whether you want to download the direct repo or from one of the mirrors so i've already actually prepared a machine with mx linux so let me go ahead and start it up and switch to the screen there and let's go ahead and boot it up and we're going to do a very quick install and have a look at this distribution which is actually always on the top charts by DistroWatch and for good reasons. MX Linux is a very well built distribution with a lot of neat tools for maintaining your machine. So this is the desktop and let me first actually adjust the screen resolution here by going to applications and then settings and display. I'm going to choose 1080p and click apply. There you go. And let me close this window here and let me start the installer. Now the installer of MX Linux is not Calamares. It looks a little bit different, but it's very practical and it works really well. So let me change here my keyboard layout first. I'm going to go with the Swiss German keyboard here. So I'm going to scroll down and select my variant and click add. And I'm going to delete the English keyboard here and click OK. It's going to take a second here to load the keyboard. There you go. So we can click Next. And I don't need to run the partitioning tool here because this is a virtual machine. I'm going to use the whole disk here. And this is the only disk I have. And I can click Next and confirm by clicking Yes. And I'm going to install Grab here on the ESP because this is a UFI system. So that's fine with me. So I'm going to click Next here. Computer name is fine. I'm going to leave this as a default and click Next. And I'm going to change here the time zone. I'm going to go to Europe and the city closest to me. And I'm going to go for the 24 hours time and click Next. And I'm going to create my username and my password. And repeat it and enter also the root password here and retype it. And I'm going to click Next. And now we just have to wait until the system finishes installing. So as you can see, it's very simple. So I'll be back with you when it's done and then we will reboot the machine. So there you go. The installation is done and let's click here finish to reboot the machine. It's going to take a second to do that. So I need to remove the ISO before continuing. So let me do this very quickly. So I just removed the ISO in the virtual machine and now I can hit enter. And if everything went well, we will be greeted by the grab boot loader. There you go. So here we have the first option to start MX Linux. We have also some advanced options here where we can start also MX Linux with system D. And that's because MX Linux is coming actually with a system five in it. And as you probably already know, MX Linux is based on Debian and Antix. So let me hit enter here in the first option to start MX Linux. It's going to take a second here to boot up. There you go. And let me enter my password here. And we are in the desktop. So let me click this to get away this message. And this is MX Linux. So let's close this up. So let's have a look at what we have here. Let me open up immediately the terminal. And let me go full screen here and increase the font size. And I'm going to type in, in here uname-r. 
And as you can see, MX Linux comes by default with the kernel 519, which is actually an LTS kernel, if I'm not mistaken. And this comes as default, but you can change this and I'm going to show you how to do this in a second. Of course, MX Linux is based on Debian and Antix, so you can check also for updates via the apt package manager by typing in sudo apt update and hit enter. Enter my sudo password and it's going to take a second here to check for packages. Now, as you can see here, it's checking for packages, but there is a problem with one of the repositories. So if you encounter the same problem when you install MX Linux, it's very easy to fix. Let me close the terminal here and let's go here to MX Tools, which is probably the best part of MX Linux in the sense that it offers a lot of utilities for system maintenance and they are very, very well put together and it makes the system maintenance very easy. So in this case, I want to fix my repository. So I'll go down here and click on repo manager and enter my admin password here and what i'm going to do here i'm going to check for select fastest mx repo for me and it's going to take a moment because it's going to basically go through all the mirrors and select the fastest ones and then put those fast mirrors on the top it's going to take about 30 seconds to do this but it's definitely worth it if you want to install packages with the best speed there you go so i can click close and then close again here going to close this we're going to go back here in a second and i'll open up the terminal again and go full screen and again run the last command and as you can see now it's going to be much faster and we don't have any error so we can upgrade now our packages by replacing update with upgrade and it's going to take a second here to do that and there you go this is done so let's close this and let's go back to the mx tools now, as I said, this is a really fantastic menu. You have here all the utilities needed to maintain your system. So we have a live USB installer here that can be useful to create USB installers. We have also a snapshot utility here. We have also some maintenance utility for truth, rescue scan, boot options, boot repair in case you have problems with grub. We have a cleanup utility here. And if we click here, you will see we can clean up actually the thumbnails and the cache in your home directory, which is a really nice touch because this tends to get a lot of data that we don't use. And by running this utility here, we can free up some space in our system. We have also the menu editor here and also user manager. And under setup, we can actually set up also several things here. We can set up, for example, the bash shell. If we click here, we can set up, for example, the aliases. We can set up also the prompt. We can choose here from default, fancy prompt or custom if you want to select yours. We'll go back to default here and we have some other settings for the history. And if you have an NVIDIA card, this is very handy. You have here the NVIDIA driver installer. So this is nice to have. If you want to have some codecs installed, you can also click here codecs installer. And we have also the possibility to set up Conkey, which is actually already here, but we can change the look and feel of it. Now we have also many other settings here for setting up the system. We have also some software things for fixing GPG keys, package installer and the repo manager, what we just saw, and also some utilities here for the quick system info format USB and the iDevice mounter. So let me close this up and let me go here to one package manager, which is actually MX package installer. So we have several package managers here in MX Linux. One is this MX package installer, and the other one is the Synaptic package manager, which is actually accessible from the bar here. But let me click this first, and I need to authenticate. And here we can choose between several categories of software that we might want to install. So for example, let's go and have a look at the kernels. You can see here, we can install also the Debian 5.8 kernel, which is the latest one in Debian, I believe. And if we click this and then we click install, it's going to take a moment, but it's basically going to install the latest Debian kernel. And then when we reboot the machine, we will be able to boot into this kernel. Now I need to click OK here to accept the dependencies. And it's going to take a second here to install the kernel. So this is basically going to install also not only the Linux kernel, but also the Linux headers for the kernel. And that's why it's going to take a moment. It has to install those and also create a new grab configuration file that it's going to be modified automatically by this script. 
And there you go, the process is finished successfully. So let's click OK here. I'm going to reboot in a second. But the next thing I want to show you is also how you can install, for example, other apps like Spotify. We have a Spotify option here in the audio category of MX Installer. And if you click here and then click Install, it's going to take a second here to install. But more likely, as you can see here, we have a problem installing this. And I wanted to show you this because I want to show you also how you can fix this if you encounter this problem. So let me click OK here and click Close. We'll go back here to the MX Tools and fix GPG keys because we had a problem there when we imported the Spotify GPG keys. So let's click this option and enter our sudo password. And as you can see, now it corrected the problem. And now we can hit Enter to close the window. And we can close the window and go back to MX Package Installer. Need to authenticate again. And if you go back to Audio and again click Spotify and click Install, this time it's going to be installed fine. So it's going to take a second to do this. And I need to accept this to confirm. And the process finished successfully. So let's click OK and click Close. And if I go to the menu here and search for Spotify, you can see we have Spotify here up and running. So the MX package installer is really powerful because it lets you configure the system the way you want to with several packages. Now, the other package manager is the Synaptic package manager, which is available from the bar here. And we need to authenticate as well. And here you can also search, for example, for a package. Let's search for Caden Live. And as you can see, we can click, for example, here the package and mark for installation and then click mark. And when we click apply, we will be installing Caden Live. So it's nice to have these two package managers. Synaptic is a very solid package manager and the MX package installer, it helps you install the most popular software. I'm not going to install this, so I'm just going to close this for now and click quit. And let's reboot now our machine and click restart here. It's going to take a second now to restart the machine. Now let's go, for example, to the advanced options here. And you can see we have also new kernels. So we can choose to boot the 5.8 kernel with System 5 in it or with System D. This is really up to you. I tried actually both and System D also on MX Linux works fine, but System 5 is of course the default option. So I'm just going to boot this up. It's going to take a second to do that. And I enter my password. And we are back in the desktop. Now let's go to the menu here and see what's installed by default. This is XFC and we have of course the XFC terminal available to us. If we go under Office, we have LibreOffice installed. Installed is a 6.1 version, but we have also the possibility to install the 7.0 version, which is the latest one from the MX package installer. Now, if we move up here, we have MX Tools, which we saw already. Tools are basically the tools we saw before in the menu for administrating the system. And under Multimedia, we have, of course, several tools here, like VLC, which is already pre-installed. Spotify, I just installed it, as we saw before. We have Firefox and Thunderbird as default for internet and email. We have also here some graphic tools, some games, and also some development tools. So I always have the feeling MX Linux is a kind of unique distribution in a sense that it's very well put together. It offers very neat tools for system administration in a very simple and very easy way. Now, having the choice also to switch between newer kernels and older kernels is also definitely a great plus. If you have hardware which is fairly new and you're running the 4.9 kernel, chances are that maybe not all the hardware will be supported. But if you're installing the latest kernel, then probably things are going to be working better. Also, I find it's nice from MX Linux to offer you the possibility to work with System 5 in it or System D, depending on your preference. There are people who are used to use System D all the time, so maybe that's it's easier. But the System 5 in it is the default and is also nice to have there. Now let's go back here to the Settings Manager. And we can see here these are the typical XFC settings available. We can change, for example, our theme here. We have several themes already installed for the appearance. And we have also several icons to choose from. By default, we are using the Papyrus icons, which are my favorite ones. And we have also the option here, of course, to change our fonts. MX Linux comes also with a lot of wallpapers already pre-installed. And some of them are really nice. For example, let's check out this one right here, which looks really nice as a nice red color. But we have several others to choose from. 
So let's close this up and go back again one more time to the menu. And we have also the option here to change the LightDM greeter, which is the display manager that we saw when we boot up the machine. So from here, again, we can change many settings. We can change the theme of the display manager, the icon theme. We can change also the default user image if you want to do that. You can also choose to display a certain image and you can also choose what you want to display on the display manager, for example, like the date and other things. And we can choose also the window position. That means the login window where you put in the password. And we have also some other settings here as well. So this is a very complete package. You can see here we have already also Samba installed. If we click here, we can basically add a Samba share if we have one. And it's nice to have it also here in the system settings. So MX Linux is one of those distributions which I actually recommend to people who are coming to Linux and want to have a beautiful but no fast Linux distribution. So MX Linux is very fast, it's based on Debian, it offers you a lot of configuration utilities which are very simple to use. Now if you try it out let me know in the comments below how you like it and what you think about it and if you have any question about the video let me also know in the comments below and I will answer you as soon as I can. So these are my thoughts about MX Linux. Again, it's a very well-built Linux distribution and it offers several tools, as I said in the video, for managing your system, which are extremely simple to use. And I think this is one of the reasons why it's always number one on DistroWatch since several months. I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video guys and I'll see you very soon in the next one.